And welcome back to You Reach Out at 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos uh, of things that you should know. And today we're going to be talking about yet another logical fallacy. Uh, this one actually I just found in my notes uh, this weekend. Uh, so this had to kind of uh, change around the, uh, the plan a little bit. Uh, but it is the argument from prestige. And so this is going to be related to a couple of other different logical fallacies. Uh, and uh, depending who you ends up using them, sometimes people will, will mostly in even include this one in uh, uh, the related ones. Uh, so you don't be surprised if you don't see this in any lists or, or in most of the lists online, for example, in Wikipedia. Uh, but it's going to be related to the argument from authority and as well as the uh, bandwagon argument. But both of those we're gonna talk about later. Uh, so we just wanna get into uh, how, how exactly does this one work? So this is kind of a three-in-one logical fallacy. There's three different ways that this can kind of present itself. And all three at their root uh, are misusing the reputation of the person being referred to, or it's an inappropriate use of reputation. And so the first way that you can uh, have an argument from prestige or an appeal to prestige uh, is if you have, in a formal sense, that is all coming up here, but uh, it's that it's where you have someone, say person L, uh, where they either s say some statement uh, T or, or make an argument A uh, or, or purchase a product B, and then that's the first part. And the second part is that that person L uh, happens to be elite or cool uh, or high in status in some way, shape, or form. Usually, uh, it, to be more, it, to use it in a more precise way, uh, they may have a lot of uh, expertise in a field, or may uh, be respected in their field, and possibly even the, the field in question. And then, therefore, either statement T is true, or the argument that they're using is valid, or that the product they're buying is something that you should buy. This is not actually a valid way uh, to make an argument. Um, and so th this is, in fact, an error. Uh, and again, the, the reason is that uh, just because someone happens to be uh, you know, important or uh, prestigious does not necessarily uh, give them expertise on the, that particular product, or product. It doesn't necessarily make their argument valid. We've seen a lot of examples of how arguments themselves cannot be valid. If someone who has a lot of prestige just happens to make one of those arguments, it doesn't make it valid. It just means that he's wrong or she's wrong. And then, of course, the, the same thing goes for a statement. There's a lot of really stupid things that you could say, and if you had a lot of respect, uh, would still nevertheless be wrong. And so, this is this is kind of the first of three ways that you can misuse your reputation uh, and and kind of demand that. Uh, either you or, or someone else who has this uh, kind of reputation uh, kind of confers truth on what you're trying to say. The second way uh, that this fallacy can manifest itself uh, is the, the, the way that uh, it's going to be similar to this, uh, but there's going to be kind of an extra component added, uh, which is that 
you should do this because it will give you status. So you will be cool if you do this. You know, you will uh, be respected if you, you know, drink this Bud Light beer. Uh, or you will, you know, get the, 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 the goods or services that come along with status if you, you know, believe this. Um, now, there may be truth to that. Uh, there, there may be situations in which you can get goods and, and status-related goods, uh, or, or, or status however you would measure it, uh, by participating in certain things, but it doesn't necessarily make them, you know, good. It doesn't make the, the beliefs that you would believe true, um, and so on and so forth. So uh, you would have to weigh out whether or not you desire status or to be you know, correct or, or status or to, to have those goods, etc. Uh, and so that, that's going to be another way that it can manifest itself. And the third way is the uh, prestigious jargon or, or to, to use words that only the, uh, the experts in the field would understand. Uh, and or, or possibly only people who are following really closely to you per in particular uh, would understand. And so, uh, kind of looking at this, uh, what, what, why, why are these three things uh, kind of important to, to, to separate out in general? Uh, so the first is, is that uh, there's a long tr uh, list uh, that you could find. I, I, I had a link that described a whole bunch of them. I, I've lost the link. I'm sorry. You know, go look it up. It's on overcoming bias. You can find it. Uh, but the, the there's a lot of authors, uh, scientists, and uh, people who are famous for various different reasons uh, who accomplished something amazing really early in their career and establish themselves as kind of a world-renowned expert in something or other, uh, whether it's you know, writing or whatever. And then afterwards, their work becomes kind of bland and droll, and uh, they never reach the, the pinnacle that they hit when they first become famous. Uh, One-hit wonders are like this sometimes, where you'll have you know, a group of musicians who will come together and create this really amazing thing, and then they try to replicate it, and it just doesn't work. Uh, this happens in practically every field that, that you could name, including science, uh, where you, you can find something out and then further attempts at researching in that direction uh, go dry. And so, in, in this context, uh, if you try to believe something that they say uh, on the basis purely of their reputation, uh, of their uh, importance and fame, uh, you may be misled because they're the ability to, to, I guess, produce claims that are true may be tied to this kind of uh, burning down of their, their candle or their uh, loss of, of their ability to, 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 to their, uh, or to, to conduct their expertise um, I I in that manner. So you, you could be on the tail end of their expertise curve, uh, as, it w as you will. And so it, there, there is that danger to keep in mind. Another danger in, in the same kind of context is the innovator's dilemma, which is that you have uh, established, especially when you're dealing with companies, uh, if, if you have a really prestigious you know, person heading a company or uh, a company with a really good reputation, uh, oftentimes they will miss the important market or, or miss the important invention and treat it without taking it seriously. And so there's, you know, the history of invention is littered with these things like the telephone or the, um, the personal computer or the cell phone where uh, the, the in original inventors would go and try to try to make a case to the established uh, people involved uh, who would just not understand why anyone would waste their time with something that doesn't work very well. Similarly with arguments and, 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 and knowledge in general, uh, if you are already established, you have nothing to lose by believing what you currently believe. And so if evidence comes contrary to that, or an argument appears that kind of uh, makes your worldview um, look incomplete, uh, your first reaction is to uh, try to ignore it uh, in many cases. And so the innovator's the dilemma in general is going to be uh, one of the reasons to watch out for uh, when someone is referring to someone with prestige uh, to justify their argument. Uh, another reason is ancestor worship, where, you know, I, I'm probably about as guilty as this as anyone is. Uh, you know, you, you look back and you see what what did your forefathers do, and then kind of justify 
your beliefs based on that. Of course, there, there's reasons that they could have been wrong. And so blind ancestor worship is only going to, to lead you astray uh, when you're faced with actual evidence. So, so we, we, we have reasons to be cautious of a misuse of reputation and, and reasons to be uh, skeptical of, of, of people when they base their claims purely on reputation and not on evidence itself. Um, but are there valid ways of approaching this and valid ways of using reputation? And of course, absolutely there is. Um, there is an argument to be made that uh, you have prestige when you have a reputation to lose and that if you are uh, say, you know, a research chair in Canada, and you make a really stupid claim, and the media or something calls you on it, uh, the institution that granted you that chair, or the, the, the university you're part of, could lose a lot of faith. Um, in practice, this doesn't happen quite as much as it probably should, uh, but there is some validity in that. And so, when you're having to choose between, say, someone who's got a research chair in Canada, and just some random crank from the internet, uh, when they're arguing about something, should they ever even get to the point where the research chair is e even risking his prestige on talking to someone like that, uh, then, again, you, you can't just purely decide it on that because the research chair could be wrong. Um, the, if the, the second way that this could be a kind of or approached in a valid way is if you have absolutely no other way of verifying uh, or looking at a claim that someone who has uh, this reputation has made. So again, so so if, if you are the person who, who uh, is faced directly with someone, uh, or with someone who is referring to, to a third party who has the reputation, in either case, if there's no evidence either way, and the only claim is just that single uh, you know, person with a good reputation, it's better than nothing. Uh, and so, you know, it, you can use that, uh, but just be wary that uh, it's a, an extremely shaky uh, evidence of, uh, to, to base anything on, uh, and practically everything else trumps it. Um, and then, of course, the, the other uh, part is that sometimes the, the reputation institutions or people have can be earned. Uh, th this is something you'll see when you're dealing with the kind of back and forth between the what's up with that crowd and the IPCC. Uh, we shouldn't necessarily believe the IPCC without ver verifying their claims entirely, but not a lot of people have access to the ability to verify their claims. Uh, and so, yes, they are more prestigious than the, you know, what's up with that website crowd. And, you know, we, we shouldn't take them too seriously, but at the same time, if you're given the choice between uh, a group that has done the simulations and has gone through and produced a model that, to some extent at least, uh, does predict uh, correctly what's going on with the climate. Uh, that's one one group to, to at least believe in part, uh, rather than a group that does not have this. And so th there there is some give or take uh, when dealing with both of these groups. Uh, but again, it's, it, you're, you're not uh, purely believing it because of reputation alone, because that would be a mistake. And to kind of go more along the line of the prestigious jargon, uh, it may be acceptable to use prestigious jargon if you're, or, or to, to have a source that uses prestigious jargon uh, if you're dealing with experts and if you're talking to experts or arguing with experts or, or people who would be expected to understand the terms or have seen this video series and would be, uh, uh, or, or, and you could understand that they would be okay with looking up the terms as one of the previous videos suggested. Uh, if you're not talking to someone like that, or if you're just talking to someone who's a lay person or who is not an expert in the field, explicitly talking over their head by using terms that they wouldn't understand, uh, in, in especially in a time-sensitive way, is not appropriate, and uh, it is logically invalid to do. Uh, because you're, you're, you're basically not giving them a, a chance to understand what you're saying, so you're not really saying anything to them at all. Uh, and that is, of course, uh, something to, you know, if you're, if you're not saying anything, why not just keep your mouth shut? Well, of course, the answer to that is because you're trying to look good. And uh, again, th this is, if, if all you're trying to do is look good, then great, but at least admit it. Say, say it out in public. Say, I'm going to try to speak in gibberish because it'll make me look good rather than because I'm right. 
If I was right, I would actually provide evidence to the extent uh, that I am right, uh, and then you would be able to verify it. But of course, most people would never be willing to do that. Most people would rather you believe that they're right, uh, whether or not they are in fact right. So, so kind of going back to the argument from authority. So it, this is very similar to and related to the argument from authority. And, and again, we're, we are going to go into the argument from authority in a later video. Uh, but I, I specifically want to draw this distinction here, and other people may draw the distinction elsewhere, uh, that the argument from prestige uh, usually can have uh, expertise in the matter of N. So, for example, if you're arguing about some fact about s physics uh, or some uh, property of uh, quantum dots, uh, you wouldn't go to uh, the, the, the your boss, uh, unless of course you work in somewhere that has anything to do with quantum dots, uh, and ask your boss one way or the other. Uh, if you were, if you had a problem with biology, you wouldn't go to Joseph Stalin, even if you were in the Soviet Union, uh, for a serious opinion on biology. You know, Joseph Stalin or one of his uh, uh, the, the, the authority uh, people in the Soviet Union would probably give you an answer on what you should believe in the, the, uh, the science of biology, uh, but they aren't really an expert. Uh, and so if you believe them, it would be because you had to, rather than because they were right. Uh, and so that, that's kind of an argument from authority, is the, the sort of believe this because the authority figure says so. That, 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 that's closer to the, the, the uh, argument from authority side. Whereas this would be closer to the, the actual field of chemistry. So if, if, if Albert Einstein, for example, believed something about physics, he may be right or wrong, and there's good reasons why he could be right. Um, but if you're faced with, ev if, you, if you have to choose between believing Einstein and believing evidence, uh, you should believe the evidence. And anyone who argues that you should be believing Einstein instead of the evidence uh, may actually be incorrect in, in doing so, depending, again, on the topic. Um, and so the, the, the kind of split can be drawn uh, between does the expert actually have knowledge in the field or has they, have they gained their expertise, or has the authority gained yeah. their authority by knowing things about the field in question? Uh, that might be one way to kind of split it. But either way, uh, it, it's worth avoiding both cases. Uh, the bandwagon arg argument, of course, is similarly related, uh, because it's how many people believe this person, or how many people uh, accept their, their prestige. Um, again, very closely related. And, and so, uh, again, it, it is kind of a, a misplaced authority thing. Uh, and I, it, e even from the perspective of the, uh, the, the, those who would, I guess, believe in an omnipotent God, uh, quote, I'm, I'm quoting a logical fallacy site from the Christian perspective here, uh, quote, of course we can misunderstand God just like we can misunderstand human beings, unquote. So, going back to the, why would we even bring this up is because if you're quoting an expert purely because they have a good reputation, you may be misunderstanding the context of that expertise. Uh, and so it, it's always uh, worth it to, to be skeptical of claims on those grounds alone. Uh, so, you know, and the argument there is that, you know, if, if we can misunderstand, you know, holy texts and uh, e even if you had a perfect creator, you're still going to be able to, to misinterpret or, or reinterpret what he says to your ends. So it's worth keeping in mind. Uh, it's also worth pointing out here uh, that many of these logical fallacies have different names uh, and are, I guess, viewed from the opposite direction, from the field of advertising. And we've talked about advertising in previous videos, uh, but it's, it's really worth kind of drilling down into this point, which is that uh, practically every way that you can misuse logic or every argument that is not valid can be used to sell something, can be used to convince uh, when you don't have evidence, can be used to um, basically mislead uh, in a way that advertisers, of course, are trying to do. Um, and this is one of the best examples of that, where uh, if you have a good reputation, then you know, you're using it to sell a product, right? Um, whether or not it's in the interests of the person you're, you're selling to. 
Uh, and so the, when, when you're going through this list of videos and you're learning all these logical fallacies, uh, there, there's, there's someone going through a similar list of videos or a similar course learning the exact same things, only they're trying to mislead you. And so you should know these things because you, want, you need to be inoculated against what they're trying to do to you. Uh, and so kind of be on the watch out because you know, whether or not you're paying attention to these videos, the other guy certainly is. And so be on the watch for that. Some examples uh, where this kind of uh, applies or how this kind of works. Uh, there, there's a guy by the name of Tedlock who uh, wrote a book on expert judgment, which is worth kind of checking out, uh, which looks at how experts in fields generally fare. Uh, and in a lot of different fields, uh, especially when you get into politics, uh, experts do very poorly when predicting long-term uh, trends. And kind of the further into the future you go, the more poorly they do. And so again, if you're basing your argument entirely on the reputation of an expert who in all probability isn't actually correct half the time, uh, your, your argument is on kind of shaky ground. In my own field in computer science, uh, there are a lot of uh, really highly regarded computer scientists who have made statements that are just embarrassingly false. Uh, Herbert, Herbert Simon, uh, a very famous computer scientist, quote, uh, machines will be capable within 20 years of doing any work a man can do, unquote. That was in 1965. Now, we're making good progress on that, uh, but we are long after 20 years from when he made that statement. Uh, there was a lot of similar uh, optimism in the 60s uh, in the computer science community and people thought that computers would be able to do all these magical things in part because they were doing some pretty amazing things at the time uh, and sometimes they were right sometimes they weren't if you did nothing but just believe experts when they say said stuff like this uh, you would be uh, misled your plans based on that would have been uh, would not have worked out and in general, uh, it wouldn't have wor worked out very well for you. Here's another one from Marvin Minsky, another very famous computer scientist. Quote, within a generation, the problem of creating artificial intelligence will substantially be solved, unquote. Again, that was 1967. Uh, now, we're about a generation later, and we've had a lot of progress in artificial intelligence. But the, the kinds of artificial intelligence developments that they thought were going to happen have certainly not in, in their entirety happen. Now, there's more to experts than just prestige. And there, there's more to prestige than, than just being an expert. Lord Kelvin uh, was one of the, the, the most important physicists of all time, practically. Uh, he, he invented and developed a lot of different things that we take for granted these days. Uh, but even he was susceptible to being wrong from time to time. Uh, quote, there is nothing new to be d discovered in physics now. All that remains is more and more precise measurement." Unquote. That was in about 1900, prior to the invention of quantum er, physics, prior to Albert Einstein and his relativity, uh, prior to the, uh, the resolution of a lot of different problems in physics that have kind of meant that the 20th century physics is actually well worth looking into uh, if you want to understand the universe. In general, physics exploded after that. There was all sorts of new things that came out. He was very and extremely wrong when he said that. But again, you can't really blame him too much because at the time, for a, an expert, uh, an established expert, he was seeing not a lot of new things coming out relative to the explosion in physics that it had happened in the earlier part of his life. We can't really blame him for being completely off the ball on that. Uh, but at the same time, we have to be skeptical. If someone in a similar level of uh, prestige, in a similar level of expertise in physics were to make the same claim today, we may be tempted to believe him, just as people in the late 19th century were tempted to believe Lord Kelvin. Here's another quote from Lord Kelvin that just furthers this point. Uh, quote, no balloon and no air flight will ever be practically successful, unquote. We have airplanes. Airplanes are old hat now. They're, we've had them for about 100 years. Uh, we expect that we should be able to fly between Thunder Bay and Saskatoon if we so choose. Uh, the idea that an airplane, a powered 
air, or a flying machine with an engine on it is impossible. It's just so completely ridiculous in the 21st century. Uh, nevertheless, it was completely believable to an expert of the 90s. Because, again, that was their world. Their world was limited, the evidence they had was limited. Uh, it doesn't mean that you should similarly limit your evidence in your world in the same way. So in, in summary, be wary of abuses of reputation. Question authority when you are given authority as a reason to believe something. And, and if you have no better evidence, try to get the evidence rather than just blindly believing what you're being told. If you have any questions or would like to question my expertise, feel free to question uh, or leave those questions anywhere where this video is posted. Uh, I'm not an expertise on, or I'm not an expert uh, in logic. I'm just a person who happened to be a student at one point in my life. Uh, but I, I do think that it's worth going back and checking out where people have made mistakes in the past. Um, so hopefully this is a, a video worth watching, and I'll see you in the next one.